search for Na Young is on and Tae Joo's determination to find her is only enhanced by the feeling of past failure. Unfortunately, her kidnapper is more unpredictable and crafty than any other criminal Taeju has faced so far. With the clock ticking and no guarantees as to Na Young's safety, it's a good thing Taeju doesn't have to do this alone. Episode 12 Recap Distraught over discovering Na Young has been taken by the fake cop, Soon Ho, Taeju frantically runs through the street searching for the elusive door with a cross. Hours pass as Dong Chul drives him around to different neighborhoods, but Taeju can't seem to find the street that haunts his nightmares. Flashbacks of the 2018 chase through the alleys follow him as he runs until he finally stops to catch his breath. Dong Chul is dubious about Taejo's door and asks where he saw it. Unfortunately, Taejo's honest answer, in 2018, only confuses Dong Chul and he wonders if the younger detective is messing with him. Taeju is dead serious, however, and starts to panic that Na Young has already been missing for nine hours. He turns to resume searching, but Dong Chul holds him back. Taeju is practically dead on his feet and they're getting nowhere wandering aimlessly. Taeju is unwilling to stop, but Dong Chul is firm. He suggests that they return to the station and see if their checkpoints turned anything up. Unable to really argue, Taeju follows him reluctantly back to the car. At the station, Taeju is setting up his crime board when Nam Shik arrives with bad news. The checkpoints haven't found anything yet, and there are no cars registered to the killer's pseudonym, Lee Soon Ho. To make matters worse, the killer still has his police issued pistol and was recently provided bullets. They're interrupted by Yong Ki running in, his head still wrapped in bandages. Apparently, Nam Shik filled him in, and he was too anxious to sit around and do nothing. While the others are talking, Taeju flips through Na Young's notebook and finds the photo should taken of him tucked between the pages. His determination refueled, Taeju returns to City Hall and asks to see what Na Young had been researching. The clerk reveals should had him compile documents on the district adjustment. He explains that due to recent land development, some changes are being made and Taeju has him print off another copy. The document lists the names being considered for the new district in Seong Ildong, the area where the door bearing the cross was in 2018, is among them. Na Young is so smart. Taeju races outside just as Dong Chul pulls up. He says, he knows where they need to go and the detectives speed away. They arrive at the bridge where Taeju was run over in 2018 right before he woke up in 1988, along with backup. Taeju tells the officers what they're looking for and everyone splits up to search. Taeju retraces his steps from his chase with Kim in SEOK and is the first to find the door. Taeju starts to radio it in, but thinks better of it and hops the wall instead. The front door is unlocked and it appears that no one is home. After a brief search, Taeju finds a door with an extra lock and smashes it with his radio. The door opens up to reveal Na Young, bound and unconscious on the floor. Immediately radioing the rest of the team, Taeju rushes to her and begins to untie her wrists. Waking up, Na Young begins to scream until she realizes it's Taeju, and then her shrieks dissolve into sobs. She cries that she was scared and Taeju hugs her tightly. When Na Young has calmed down, Taeju guides her out of the room to find little Min Seok sitting on the stairs. They all stare at each other for an odd beat before Dong Chul bursts through the front door with the rest of their detective unit in tow. All three immediately ask if she's okay and Na Young nods. Taeju continues to eye little Min Seok warily as the rest of the detectives fan out to investigate. Later, Na Young sits outside, staring at her bare feet. Taeju brings her heels and sits down next to her. She assures him that she's okay, but when she takes a drink of water he notices her nails have been painted red. Na Young explains that Min Seok did it and a brief flashback shows he had painted her nails while she lay bound on the floor. Don't be angry, he told her, I'll make your nails pretty. Just then, fake, Soon Ho, had walked in and reminded Min Seok that he wasn't supposed to be in Na Young's room. He'd sent the boy to his room and as Min Seok walked away, he paused to stare back at Na Young. In the present, Min Seok looks up from the officer interviewing him and levels the same stare at Taeju. In his mind, Taeju hears 2018 Min Seok's words. Min Seok, I remember now. The horrified frown on your face. Yes, that's the face I remember. The other detectives join them and Nam Shik reports that the house belongs to a missionary who'd lived there with her husband until their son went missing five years ago. 
The couple left to search for their son but hasn't been back seen since. Dong Chul sighs that they didn't find anything inside the house and wonders where the killer disappeared to. Na Young says that, Soon Ho, had been in a rush that morning to go somewhere and offers to ask Min Se OK if he knows anything. The guys are concerned, but she insists that she's fine and doesn't feel comfortable sitting around when she can help. Sitting down with Min Se OK at the station, Na Young unwraps an ice cream for the boy and asks for his brother's real name. Turns out their biological brothers and fake, Soon Ho, is actually Kim Hyun Se OK. The boy says he also has an older sister named Kyung Ran but clams up when asked where she is. Na Young asks instead if he knows where his brother went but Min Seok only knows that Hyun Seok said he had some work left to do. His words unnerve the other detectives listening in. Finally, Na Young asks about the place Min Seok lived before ending up in the orphanage and he goes quiet. We don't get to hear what he says. Afterwards, the team wonders what Hyun Seok is planning. Na Young thinks Taeju was onto something when he said Hyun Seok's first known victim, Go Young Suk, was key. Apparently, Na Young had asked him about it while being held captive. A flashback reveals should accused him of killing Go Young Suk, Dad, Min Seok's adoptive mother, and the addict he'd pinned her murder on. Smiling eerily, Hyun Seok had wondered why she wanted to know. Na Young had said that the only murder she couldn't figure out a motive for was Go Young Suk. She deserved it, Hyun Seok had responded. Na Young had then told him that no one deserves to be murdered and Hyun Seok had flown into a rage, wrapping his hands around her throat.